After season 3 of the Transformers, Japan, instead of bringing over the really short English season 4, started making their own episodes, the first series of which featured those dummies whose heads can transform into little robots as well, the Headmasters. <laughs> Headmasters, to me, was a series that kind of got worse and worse as it went along. When this show starts, you think it's going to be awesome as you've got Optimus Prime back and there's characters you haven't seen for a long time showing up once again like Hound. And there's even guys who got brutally murdered in the movie like Prowl dusting themselves off and returning to action. But once you get a little further into this series, most of these characters start dropping off and you're mostly left with some of the Season 3 cast and the new Headmasters guys. So, not quite as good as how the series started off, but it's still okay. However, then even Rodimus and most of his gang take off, leaving us with only the stupid Noob Masters. Oh, but they didn't get rid of everyone. They left us with Daniel and Wheelie. I'm from the Autobots first as well. I'm better than he is. Oh, hey, what do you mean? You can't say that. But I'm right. You're gutless and you're scared of everything. Yes, of any previous characters, they decide to leave us with the worst of the worst. Oh, and R.C. also had to stay and babysit them. Yes, really. And me too. Wait, R.C., I'm afraid you have to stay here. Oh, why is that? If you come with me, who's going to take care of Danny and Wheelie? You'd think at least this would give R.C. more time to shine, but then all she really does is stand around in the background barely doing anything. Why let her be a character when we've got to see Daniel and Wheelie find new ways to be stupid every episode? And this one? Hmm? That looks scary! Of course I want you to come. We're buddies, aren't we? <laughs> you know how to please me, don't you? Stop talking rubbish! Here. I'm sure our commander is better. He's the best. Oh. <laughs> Wheelie's the worst. He said it. The show was so in love with stupid Daniel and Wheelie, they even had them save Fortress Maximus during his battle with Scorponok in the finale. Seriously, I know there were some missteps in Transformers Season 3, but at least they didn't hoist this disastrous duo onto a pedestal like this. Headmasters also kind of changed some of the characters' personalities, like Scourge and Cyclonus, who have now transformed into Transformers' version of Bebop and Rocksteady. <laughs> Hey, can't tell which one of you is Rotomus Prime. This is the time. You're dead me. Oh, what happened? What are you two whispering about? Nah. Oh, nothing, sir. You two should learn from Six Shot, you know. He's the best fighter we have. Yes, my lord, you're right. We'll use Six Shot as an example. Uh, but Six Shot can do seven different formations. You're just not good enough, that's all. The headmasters themselves are just really uninteresting to follow as well and are pretty dense a lot of the time. Like here, where no one told them that working out doesn't make sense for robots to do. And on the Decepticon side, you got stupid Nox staying hidden in the shadows for a while, despite everyone already knowing who he is. Lord Galvatron. What is it, Scarpinoff? Also, it takes him until over half of the series is over, episode 24, to finally start actually being proactive and is trying to take over the Decepticons' plan. Despite that obviously being what he wanted to do from the beginning. His headmaster, Zarek form, is also an overly yellow-looking wiener. He was right to stay hidden. That's one doofy-looking robot. I'm nearly there. <laughs> <laughs> At least Galvatron is in the majority of this series, and he is hilarious in Headmasters. Should I try and lure Rodimus Prime out first? What a good idea that is. You just mind your own business! See how powerful I am! I'm indestructible! <laughs> The Headmaster's team also tends to come off like incompetent bumblers a lot of the time, like in this two-parter story where the Decepticons want to blow up Mars for energy. Because 
Why wouldn't that be a plan? However, you'd think not letting Mars blow up would be kind of important so the Headmaster's team wouldn't let that happen, right? And when they're not letting planetary disasters happen, they're usually finding really petty reasons to bicker with each other. You only think about fighting all the time and not the consequences. What are you talking about? Listen, Chrome Dump, fighting is an art, you know. What? An art? Fighting means using your brains too, apart from your fists. So to win, you have to plan ahead. Are you saying I'm stupid, Brainstorm? Everything you do is on the spur of the moment. What do you know? This just makes them really not compelling to follow in the slightest. Cerebrus slash Fortress Maximus himself is a horrible leader. He'll often just sit around inside himself doing nothing while the rest of the team has to carry the episode. Until near the end when he'll do the full transformation into Fortress Maximus. Maximus to waste time. Now, every so often a familiar character will return for super awesome things like anticlimactic deaths. The death of Ultra Magnus. Can you hear me? It's Fortress Maximus. You have to keep the peace on Earth. Ugh, if I'm gonna watch weird voice Ultra Magnus get beaten, I prefer him to be voiced by Barry Burton. Remember me, I am your death wish. Decepticons, arrived at last. There's nothing for you here. Why don't you just go home? Okay, now let me send you express to hell. <laughs> <laughs> Beaten? Me? Well, there's nothing I can do now. This is also the point in the show where it gets extremely formulaic. A lot of the battles towards the end are solved by Cerebrus forming Fortress Maximus and destroying the audience with stock footage. And his enemies with his sword. I just found it really hard to get invested in the supposed rivalry between Fortress Maximus and Scorponok because it's not set up very well and it feels like an invading force taking away all the time from the characters or stories you'd rather be seeing. Wasn't all bad, though. There was Six Shot. My name is Six Shot. Oh, yeah? Now you know who I am. Look out! Beaten? Uh, Me? I'm the ninja consultant for the Decepticons. N ninja con consultant I, I don't know. Yeah, all right. Sixshot was one of the more compelling characters in Headmasters because he had an arc, which involved defecting from the Decepticons. The Decepticons have really bad luck with their multi-changers, don't they? Guess it's sort of balanced out, though, because Octane and Blitzwing both forgot they defected to the Autobots in this series. But you know what? The finale of Headmasters was less about the Autobot Headmasters as it was about Six Shot going after Scorponok. <laughs> I'm going to betray you. Darn it. I'm going to totally destroy you along with Earth. So yeah, Headmasters starts off awesome with a bunch of pre-movie and post-movie characters all doing stuff, but then it strips them all away. Hell, we don't even have Cybertron by the end of this series, and it barely even feels like the same show it started at. Which in other cases could be a good thing because it meant development, but here it just feels like they gutted everything you actually liked and you're just left with a hollow shell of the Transformers. This series also personally annoyed me by only having one scene featuring Starscream and it being a cup flashback. I was really hoping that the Japanese continuity would remember that Starscream wasn't dead, but it probably wouldn't have ended well if he wasn't Headmasters, so whatever. So, yeah, while some of the hilarity of Headmasters just comes from what happens in the show, it is aided quite a bit by the absolutely atrocious English dub. And yeah, of course that's what I'm using for this. The dub this show received was by the Hong Kong-based Omni Productions, made for Malaysia, where English is their second language. While it does give you 
basically the correct story, this dub is kind of infamous for its lack of effort in most areas. There is no attempt at all to make these characters sound the way you'd expect. Look at that! The Decepticons are here! All right, then. I'll go and help the ones that are trapped. Something must have happened on Cybertron. If we release the energy from the power packs now, Something might happen to the Sigma computer. God! One of these days I'll come and get you! Characters tend to ramble on a lot and usually drop some pretty odd non sequiturs. This dub is also full of a bunch of hilarious pseudo swearing. Darn that sound wave! Darn it! But then you'll also get some pretty odd moments like the Autobot headmasters telling Predaking to go to hell. Go to hell! My god. Some of these voices are the complete opposite of what they should be, like Blur, the one that should be a fast talker, now sounds stoned. Oh, it's oh. a ship, it's a ship, oh, it's a ship. They really think they can damage the Sigma computer with that kind of magnetic force? What a bunch of fools they are, huh? You're a little bit slow, aren't you, Wally? Oh yeah, I guess his name isn't Blur anymore, is it? Which is gonna lead us to the first thing on this list, so let's transform and roll out all the way to Cybernon! <laughs> Yo, bot, you like lists in your lists? Here's the funniest renames in the English dub of Headmasters. Omni Productions were very clearly at least vaguely familiar with some of the names used in English Transformers, but they ended up changing, messing up, and giving weird pronunciations to a bunch of things. One thing that always amuses me with this dub is the Transformers' home planet no longer being Cybertron. Something must have happened on Cybertron. I'll never let you go back to Cybertron. The war on Cybertron continues. This is my good old friend. He's like all of us here. Here he came from Cybertron! What? Cybertron? What is going on here? Who are all these weird Transformers? Uh, oh good! Galvatron's here! He'll sort out this mess! Now is the perfect time for us to take over the computer in order to control all of Cybertron! What? Cybertron? I don't understand anything! Galvatron! Don't count your chickens before they hatch. Uh, Chrome Dome, you're kind of a... Blur turned into a really Wally in Headmasters. You're a little bit slow, aren't you, Wally? Optimus Prime's taken Marshall along with him. Optimus Prime, I have to go inside. You keep an eye on things here for me. Yes, sir. No one can take on the Decepticons like Rotimus Prime. And yes, he's Rotimus Prime, even when he's actually Hot Rod in this dub. I'm Rotimus Prime. I want you to go after Rotimus Prime. Blaster got turned into... Billy and I will go to, uh... Billy, you can start now. But funny enough, when Blaster gets rebuilt in this series, he gets upgraded to his real name. Billy's come back to life. His first mission is to collect all information on the magnetic bug. He's renamed Blaster. Well, his old real name. He's supposed to be twin cast at this point, but they're getting closer. Billy! Billy! My name's now Blaster. Don't you call me Billy anymore. Even the human characters had their names messed with. Daniel was only referred to as Danny. Danny? Danny! Oh! Oh! oh. <laughs> and Spike got downgraded to... Oh, Sparkle, you came at the right time. Could you please explain to us, Sparkle? Sparkle, Sparkle! Seriously, whose idea was it to rename Spike to Sparkle? That's a good idea. What kind of idea is that? Oh, sorry, I meant whose idea was it? It's Philip! Oh, uh, yes, good old Autobot base Philip, though he's not as big as Fortress Maximus, aka. Spaceship Bruce will take you as close as it can to the meteorite. Spaceship Bruce. They only call him that once, but man, is it ever precious. Important items from Transformers weren't safe either. You know that little trinket known as the Matrix of Leadership? Well, that's not what it's called anymore. Optimus Prime has gone in without taking a power pack. 
Well, I'm afraid he left the power pack on Earth. Only with a fully charged power pack can the computer be protected. Power packs! Now you're playing with power! Packed power! Of course, it wouldn't be confusing enough if it was just the Matrix that was turned into the power pack. So, Energon Cubes? Yep! They're also power packs. I believe we should send the power packs to planet Sandra. We've located power packs on a planet called a Hive. We need to get as many power packs as we can. <laughs> I think by the end of the series, they're just calling anything they didn't want to translate power packs. I told you to check out the power pack store in that pirate ship. <laughs> There are just some moments with these really lame voices that stick out for me in particular and I'm always amused by. The once mighty Decepticon-based Trypticon is immediately reduced to playing foil to... Who else? The stars of Headmasters, Danny and Wheelie! What is it, Wheelie? Come on, Danny, we should go that way! Trust me, Danny, I've got an idea! Done! <laughs> <laughs> no problem. Oh. Oh. oh no! And so falls Trypticon, son of a bitch. Oh, oh no! <laughs> Rebellion on Planet Beast is a kind of weird episode, even for Transformers. It starts off with Rita Repulsa's henchmen coming to the Autobots for help. And guess where they're from? So you're from Planet Pistol. Please help us, sir, to get them off our land. Darn those Decepticons! Did you say the Decepticons have invaded Planet Pistol? They're ordering the Pistonians to work in the underground factories. They must be idiots. Whoever named them the Pistonians must be idiots too, Rotomus. Well, as odd as this episode with a bunch of anthropomorphic animals is, I suppose it did kind of foretell Beast Wars. Wait, this snake guy has snake head hands? How does that work? Does he have to argue with his hands over what to do all the time? But the main event on Animal Planet is their leader. The Pistonian soldiers are being killed in their hundreds. The chief commander of the resistance force, Sheep, is saddened. Commander Sheep. This white lion is Commander Sheep. I guess a lion made too much sense to be a leader to them. It must be a sheep. Wow, it's amazing. All right, Bad, the swamp is clear. Show us the way. This dub apparently just hates cats because the saber-toothed tiger is now Soldier Bear. Soldier Bear, can you tell us which one is the right way? From now on, everyone has to be especially careful around here. Okay, don't give up, Sheep Commander. For one day, we will know what you are. Nah, not likely. Sheep. <laughs> lies about having friends. It's hard to believe this is actually in the episode, not just joke lines I came up with. I'll get my friends to help as well. Huh? What friends do you have? What do you mean? Everyone has friends, we need them. We can't live without friends or life's too boring. Be quiet, you two. This episode also is RC telling Daniel and Wheelie to shut up. Man, best Headmasters episode ever! We're doing something else apart from fighting, isn't that nice? RC is pleased they're doing something that isn't fighting with each other. Low standards around here. So, it turns out Wheelie's pretend friends are the Target Masters, and they really aren't friends, as the episode makes clear. I thought you said your friends were coming too! Uh, uh, did I say that? Wheelie, come on, you don't have any friends. Now tell me the truth! So these are your friends, Wheelie! What do you mean? Hey, Wheelie, did you say to him that we're good friends? I'm really sorry. Yeah, I know I should have said that you're my senior. I'm very sorry. Wheelie's a loser. Well, we always knew Daniel was the only one dumb enough to like Wheelie. The show just decided to make it extra clear for us. Me, Grimlock, no like you. <laughs> Thank you.
If the Pistonian animals weren't good enough for you, we've got a planet full of bees. And not just bees, it's more bee people. That's it. What? The Decepticons? We have to double our security immediately. Why do I keep getting stung by bee people episodes? And why else would the Decepticons be attacking bees but to get those sweet, sweet honeycomb power packs? The queen ruled from a palace which was built over the top of the secure area where the power packs were stored. I hate power packs. I tell ya, if Headmaster Style Kriya here starts mating with Galvatron to make a new bee transformer colony, I'm out. Actually, that'd be pretty funny. And better than it being about power packs. I want you to hand over all the power packs you have. I will not do as you say. What's that? The power packs belong to us. Attack! Wait! Galatron! You haven't asked me yet whether I'll let you take them. Ah, darn Autobots. I know I won't be able to make it. What are you talking about? You're gonna be okay. Till all are dumb. Oh, oh, oh. Just turns blue one second after dying? Man, these bee holes suck. Darn the Decepticons! They must think we're all a bunch of stupid airheads! That's it. And why wasn't Bumblebee in this episode? Oh yeah, he got turned into Goldbug. But then again, there was that time I swear I saw the two of them together. <laughs> This is one of those moments that's kind of extra funny when you really think about how pointless it was. While the Combiners do kind of frequent the backgrounds of a lot of battles in Headmasters, this is one of the few scenes that actually features Bruticus, and one of the times Predaking actually gets to do something slightly better than punching air. In the Atlantic, something is about to happen. <laughs> Predaking and Bruticus go swimming and throw a cruise ship. This is also one of the first things to happen in part one of the finale of the series, by the way. There's no one really important on that ship that we know of either. They just threw it for fun, I guess. I really love, too, how Bruticus isn't there to help or anything. The Combaticons just came along to watch. I guess the Predacons told them they are going to throw a boat, and they were like, Oh man, we gotta see this! It'll be hilarious! And it was. <laughs> oh, I love that stupid little laugh about it, too. Man, did they ever accomplish nothing. <laughs> I kind of saved one name change for later because it's the best of the worst. One thing Headmasters tried to do was actually give a good battle between Soundwave and Blaster. One that didn't involve Soundwave running a nightclub. We'll find out who's gonna win. Just give me your best shot. <laughs> And boy, did they ever deliver. Wow. Look at them, standing perfectly still, shooting at each other. Until they break each other's cassette doors, and then they just brutally blow the shit up. Darn that sound wave. I know how you feel, Galvatron. Billy, you okay? Not really. Find the power pack. Touching. I should have known some of his last words would be power pack. Cassette robot, I'll leave this to you. All right, chief. You were only their leader for a few years. No need to learn any of their names. Billy, I promise you. I'll get those dirty scum for you. Billy! 
using Blaster's corpse to play music at his own funeral is kind of messed up there, Wheelie. So there's a big funeral for both Transformers, and the cassettes on both sides are all sad, and they stay dead for a whopping one episode before they return as repaints! Well, to be fair, there was some minor retooling as well, because they can now hold two tapes at once! Galvatron has reused some of Soundwave's parts, along with some other new parts, and has reconstructed another Soundwave, and renamed him New Soundwave. That new Megatron is a genius. Catch the wave! New Soundwave! Hopefully he goes over better than New Coke. It's been a while. <laughs> it's been a while. Indeed, Soundwave. Man, that new Soundwave is so cool. He even gets a little throne room where he gives motivational speeches to his cassettes. You're both very good scouts, and with you here, we'll be a stronger team than they are, you know. Thank you, sir. We'll do our very best for you. But the commander is fighting the Autobots. Hmm. I expected Soundwave's cassettes to sound more Russian. So in this episode, there's a strange meteor thing flying around, and it's up to new Soundwave to figure out what it is. Hey, Soundwave. Looks like you found nothing, right? That's new Soundwave to you, consultant shot. Don you! Who are you? Do you know who I am? I'm Six Shot, the ninja consultant. Now you know who I am, look out! Six Shot might have been the hero of the series, but he's just not the hero we need right now. So let's drink in the marvel of new Soundwave, man. Who are you? What do you want? Are you a human being? That's a very strange inquiry for a UFO new Soundwave, especially coming from an alien transforming robot. <laughs> well, new Soundwave might not be quite the genius at work regular Soundwave was, but after wondering if that UFO was a human being, it's time for some new style action. Ugh, no! Oh, that hurts! Oh my goodness! Hmm, <sighs> he fell flat on his face. Guess no one wanted to catch the wave. <laughs> While I gave Six Shot credit for being the most interesting new character in Headmasters, he was still responsible for a pretty horrible act. The death of Ultra Magnus. No. Well, yeah, that was kind of his fault, but even worse than that, he befriended Daniel. Yes, stupid Donny boy had to get his stink on absolutely everything in Headmasters, so he is the first to become buddies with Six Shot when he decides the Decepticons kinda suck now that they're led by the giant yellow head. What about Six Shot? Never mind him. I've always wanted to get rid of him anyway. Six Shot even gives Danny some wonderful survival skill advice, like eat all the lovely bricks your mother made for you. Eat them up quickly. I don't feel like eating. You have to eat, you know. Yeah, don't ration things out. Cram all that food into you immediately. That's some good survival skills. Guess you're lucky you're a robot, Six Shot. Uncle Six Shot, you're completely different from what you were before, you know. Uncle Six Shot? Really, Danny Daniel? Really? Remember when Daniel ended up getting that giant Autobot library destroyed just trying to find out Ultra Magnus's birthday? Guess that was more about Daniel looking good than it was Ultra Magnus because he now calls the bot who murdered him Uncle. Uncle Sixshot is going back to the Decepticons. Well, that's a great way to ruin a character. You're the worst, Daniel. You're the worst. Too bad your dad, Sparkle Sparkle, never taught you anything about how to not be an annoying tag-along. <laughs> Well, this one's a quickie. Unfortunately for Fortress Maximus, I suppose. 
<laughs> What's happened to the headmasters? Fortress Maximus has come himself. <laughs> well, you heard it here, folks. Fortress Maximus has come himself. And I don't know why Scorponok knows that. Or takes such joy out of it. <laughs> Guess he is giving himself head! As in he's a head sitting on a desk inside himself. Don't be gross, guys. Fortress Maximus has come himself. Ha, huh, yeah, never mind. This is also partly why Fortress Maximus is a crap leader. Cerebrus' transformation is completely useless for anything besides being Fortress Maximus' head, so he never goes anywhere. He just sits around and, uh... Fortress Maximus has come himself. Ah, uh, yeah. And we'll all come ourselves next time for the top 10 funniest headmasters moments. Maybe. <laughs>